Did I get completely carried away? Yes, yes I did. Hello and sorry for the rather unusual look. <laughs> I've just been filming a little reel for Instagram on a film noir evening look and the light of that's good and I didn't have time to change. So I thought, who will? <laughs> Maybe it could be entertaining anyway. But what we're actually going to be doing is make them and felt brooches or corsages, which you can pin actually i often mean wear them on berets i thought that they would be a good idea coming up to christmas because they're really easy to make i would say quick and easy to make but that would might be a little lie <laughs> but they are easy to make i bought little booklets from 1940s so the brooches i'm going to be showing you are genuine 1940s make do men designs the templates for the petals and leaves are actually really simple if you're like me you'll get completely carried away <laughs> yeah perfect christmas presents and i also really like the make do and men spirit of the 40s i think it's like really relevant for today when most of us are <laughs> not feeling very rich. It's lovely to make someone a present that you've put time into. You can choose the kind of flowers and colours that you think that they'll like. You could even make men a little buttonhole. I don't know how men in my family would feel about that. We might get one anyway. So the idea in the 40s behind the make do and men felt brooches was clothes were getting quite tired, they'd worn them for a while. With fabric rationing there wasn't much opportunity to cheer up your wardrobe so they became adept at using little pieces of things so one of my kind of favorite ways they cheered up 40s clothes was in like crocheting little colorful fingerless gloves because obviously that didn't use that much yarn but just added a little pop of color to an outfit and the other way was making these little felt brooches so one of the things that i would say quickly before i start is if you just go to your local shop you'll probably find felt for children so it'll be in quite kind of bright colours and if you want some more subtle floral colours I would look on Etsy I'll link the shop that I bought from but it is a British shop so there might be shops more local to you but they did all kinds of colours and even like ranged in like special colours for Christmas or colours for particular flowers so kind of well worth doing and then you can kind of give the brooches or corsages as gifts you can pin them to berries which is one of my favourite things and the good thing about these felt brooches as well is that it doesn't matter if they get wet if you go out in the wind and rain they're, they're not valuable they survive the rain too so you know there's some lovely vintage corsages like kind of beautiful vintage silk corsages but you'd want to look after those wouldn't you really but with these like handmade make do and men felt brooches you can wear them every day and <laughs> as I've got carried away and I'm making quite a few I think I will be wearing them every day so I'll show you what I've been up to so I started with a simple design of what they call multicolour daisies but I decided to do in a kind of aqua and forget me not blue. You start by cutting a strip for the stalk and just stitching around the edges and then you cut another strip for the centre and cut little snips into it to form a fringe and then roll it up really tightly as you can see I'm doing and that's to form the centre of the flower. And once that's rolled up tightly, you stitch it really firmly together. Now these have a tendency to um, unfurl themselves from the centre, so it's really important to make sure that the stitching has gone through all the layers of the coil. You can see that I'm kind of being, you know, quite... Um, ferocious in my uh, stitching through all those layers and this isn't a kind of project where you have to make really tiny neat little stitches no your stitches will never show so once the coil is all firmly stitched together you stitch it onto the stalk which is a little fiddly when you first start it's kind of apt to flop around a bit and once you've got your 
centre attached to the stalk, you put the flower head on. I'm just showing you how it goes round, but in fact, you stitch the petals together first just to create that look where they sort of fold inwards and then you push the stalk through the centre and then you form the leaves and it's important with the leaves just to fold them over first at the base and stitch down just a kind of little way along and then that helps to create a nice little curve and I've left these leaves simple but you can also cut into the leaves to create little serrations and make them look more leaf-like and then you stitch the leaf firmly onto the stalk and I just placed it quite kind of asymmetrically along the stalk and that seemed to work really well and when you are placing the leaves make sure that you don't put them on the same side of the stalk for each flower uh, vary it from left to right and then you've got your little posy that you can tie a little ribbon round and in a pretty bow and perhaps sew a brooch pin on the back too and you can see how I varied the aqua and forget-me-not blue colour on the centres and the petals to create that little kind of contrast in the bunch. And then I wanted to show you the design for the rosebuds because it's a bit different. So you cut out the petals individually in that um, shape with a slight curve in the centre. You gather around the base and pull it up and then you cut out the calyx that's going to fit over the petals and I just did that by eye. And then I decided to put a pipe cleaner in the stalk and that just means that you can bend the stalk around afterwards. So you literally cut your strip, cut your pipe cleaner just a tiny bit uh, shorter than the strip, fold it around and sew that together at the ends and along the side. Obviously using a nice matching, I used um, olive green for the stalk and for the threads. And then you also cut a strip to form the centre of the rosebuds. I used a brown felt and you can see me just snipping in the fringe. Obviously you want to be careful just to snip about two thirds of the way down. And it really helps to have a really little sharp pair of scissors. And then you roll it up into that coil. And that's how it looks. And then stitch through, I can't recommend this enough, make sure you stitch through all those layers because the centre of that coil is so apt to unravel. And then you stitch the centre onto the stalk really firmly and you can see it's a kind of tricky in the beginning, there it is flopping all over the place. But uh, once you've got it secured with the first few stitches, then you're away. And I put quite a few stitches in because I wanted it to stand up nicely and not flop around too much, as you can see that it's doing at the moment. And then there it is. And then you get your rosebud petals and gather them up and start joining them individually to the base of the centre. So this was quite fiddly too, just keeping the gathers uh, together and then you sort of try and fold the petal over that centre to enclose most of it and just stitch, there are three of those petals in all and they just overlap around the base and then you stitch them around the rosebuds. And then I also put in a few stitches, as you can see, just around the centre of the flower to hold all the petals in place. And then I made a little cross, that shows a little hole, but you can just make a little kind of cross cut in the centre of the calyx and then fold it round. And I chose this rather kind of wild looking calyx because I wanted to create the look of a wild rosebud. And you can see I just put little stitches just in the centre of each calyx to join it to the rosebud to hold them in place because I wanted the effect of the rosebud being kind of enclosed in there. And then onto the leaves and as before you just make sure to fold over the base and just stitch little 
way up so that the leaves have that nice, um, you know, not flat folded inward look. And I also uh, went ahead afterwards and uh, clipped into the leaves to make them look a little bit more kind of interesting with a little serrated edge. But just here, I'm just stitching the leaves firmly onto the stalk. And just like with uh, arranging flowers, when you're making a bunch of these felt flowers, it's best to have an odd number. For some reason, that always looks best. So that's my first rosebud, but I did decide to make three of them. And then the final bunch of flowers I thought I'd show you how to make are what they call these gay golden marigolds. So I'm starting with a nice sunny yellow for the centre and I've cut a strip and I'm cutting that little fringe that makes that for that little kind of pom-pom looking centre with my nice little sharp scissors and then rolling that up into a nice uh, coil. And I just thought I'd show you the scene of me stitching my flowers at the kitchen table, me on the less comfortable chair while Raisin Rabbit occupies her favourite comfortable chair. Anyway, back to the marigold. So you have to cut two circles, one slightly bigger than the other, and you can obviously measure all these properly or draw around them, but I find it just really easy to cut squares, one slightly bigger than the other. I use this stripey um, felt but actually I ended up using just the white underside um, anyway then you just cut the corners like round the corners off the squares and that creates a absolutely fine circle and especially because you're just cutting in petals this doesn't have to be an exact neat circle and you can see how easy it is then just to do it by eye and then once you've got your two circles, one slightly smaller than the other, you can see the templates there of how it's going to look. And you cut around the edge of the circle. So I want to show you this one because it's a bit different. You cut around the edge, just creating those little curves around the edge. And then once you've done that, I'm just pointing to those little dots on the template. And those little dots are telling you where to cut to. So you just cut down. You can see you're creating little petals all the way around the edge. And I can't recommend having a little pair of very sharp scissors enough. So you do that and you can see how it's just kind of created in a really easy way, those little petals around the edge. And then you do the same thing with the larger circle. And then this is what your marigolds look like made up. And as you'll see later, I've done lots of flowers from the same booklets. But I also wanted to show you these violets, just to show you that one can start going one's own way with the flower design and do any flower you want to because the principles are the same. You make your little centre and you don't have to fringe it, you can just roll it, sew it together and then really you're either joining individual petals to your centre or you're creating circles or strips like we've seen already and cutting into them to form petals and that's really the principle of it and this is one that's also you can see there's five petals just joined individually and I made heart-shaped leaves with different coloured felt front and back and I did pipe cleaner stems and then to show you some of the other flowers I made up here is a sprig of gardenias and in another colourway a little buttonhole of gardenias and some sweet peas as they're called and you can see these had floppy stems and I'm just showing you, you can either do up the bunch with just a strip of felt or you can tie a piece of ribbon around to create that bunch and these are really really simple to make and you can attach your flowers little hair combs too this is a daisy with a pipe cleaner stem uh, sewn onto a hair comb and that's the kind of bunch of daisies so you could wear a little corsage and a matching hair comb and I also did just a little individual daisy with a pipe cleaner stem with a brooch back attached to it as well. You can buy brooch backs with a sort of old brass quality that look quite vintage and you can see they're just really easy just to stitch 
onto the back of the stem there. And I saw a really wonderful idea with the Victorian bonnet on Etsy for attaching felt flowers all around a felt hat. And I thought that would be so pretty. And I'm just going to show you my little box of tricks. So you can buy all kinds of things for attaching flowers to or hair combs. That's my tin of things. Or you can stitch them to the back of crochet gloves, which is a really pretty 40s look. I'm just showing you the marigolds there. And I did buy these little kind of felt balls, uh, that's the brooch pin. And I just wanted to show you, I started making acorns with those felt balls. And that's just a hair clip that I'm showing you. And you can get kind of ribbons, obviously. These like slim green coloured ribbons are perfect for just tying up your bunches of flowers. Uh, or ribbons in these flower colours are lovely too. For example, I've just tied my rosebuds with a piece of brown ribbon to match their brown centres there. And I did the marigolds, it very much like marigolds today, they were a little more like daffodils. I started thinking they were daffodils and I just used that kind of olive green ribbon to tie those into a bunch like that. And if you've used uh, pipe cleaner stems, you can bend them whichever way you like, as I'm doing with these daisies. And you can see these also had two colours in the centre, just doing by doing an outer strip around the centre coil. And lastly, I thought I'd show you how fun and pretty they are to wear. Those are my violets attached to my violet crochet gloves. I probably wouldn't wear everything together as I am here, but I wanted to show off all the flowers that I've been making, and there were quite a few. I think if I wear them as a corsage and on my berry, I probably would have matching ones for my real life. But, but here I thought I'd just show them all off, so you can see my violets and my uh, marigolds or daffodils as I like to think of them here. And I really think they do conjure up that real kind of 40s make do and mend era. They're really colourful, cheerful, pretty. And if you own dogs like me and you're therefore out in all weathers, they're ideal because felt is pretty indestructible, which is exactly what you need. Although I do have to keep the bunches of flowers out of the reach of Pixie who would certainly really enjoy tearing them apart and claim she mistook them for a dog toy. Oh and I did want to say um, I've had a few little queries here and there about my knitwear and I am wearing all hand knit um, either from 40s knitwear patterns or from vintage inspired patterns not actually knitted by myself but uh, by my mother who is a lot more expert than me however if you do want to know which patterns were used and a bit more about them in the world I could uh, sort of repurpose this video into one telling you about the knitwear so tell me in the comments if that would be of interest I don't actually know how many knitters follow me and one thing I can't help noticing as we go along is the destruction of my hair when I <laughs> when I created this 40s style I hadn't factored in that I was going to be pulling jumpers and berets on and off my head so I'm noticing it's it started off neat and as we go through it's starting to look like a bit like a bird's nest, isn't it? Uh, anyway, apologies for that, I'm sure you understand. The thought was there anyway. I actually really like the combination of vintage knitwear with these vintage felt flowers. I think it's just such a pretty 40s look apart from my hair <laughs> thank you so much for watching me please like this video and consider subscribing i have to go because someone needs a tummy rub